Good evening, it's Josh from Cyclone Zoz here and we're having a quick look at the tropical cyclone developing in the Gulf of Carpentaria. It's a, a lot closer to becoming a fully fledged tropical cyclone than I would have thought so at this time and I've been saying that for the past couple of days. It is impressing me with how quickly it is developing and in, in an environment that is quite hostile to uh, cyclone genesis right now and B, we also now have a cyclone warning uh, being raised for locations between Port Roper and Burketown and inland to Robinson River and Borulula. Uh, throughout Queensland and the northern parts of the Northern Territory. So quite a lot to get through in this update as well. We're going to be breaking down the maximum expected wind speeds, the maximum forecast intensity, and also the rainfall threat, which is the most important factor in this system. So looking at the satellite imagery on the storm right now, let's see if we can get a six hour loop and see how it's been progressing over the past day or so. You can see it's been wrapping itself up quite nice. So it's got a very defined lower level swirl. You can see the wispy cloud, um, especially towards the west. That's some good outflow, but it's also indicative of quite a hostile environment to this system. It looks like wind shear is quite high and as I've said earlier wind shear is something that will generally tear the tropical cyclone apart. It's not conducive uh, for organized thunderstorms to uh, blow themselves up around the tropical cyclone, which is what you want to see in an intensifying system. So this wispy cloud here is a bad sign for the system, but the fact that we've got some very nice convection, i.e. thunderstorm activity blowing up over what looks to be center island where the storm center, the storm center is probably around about where the cursor is right now. Uh, the fact that there's some good convection and thunderstorms blowing up where this cursor is, I'm very uh, close to calling this a uh, very organized tropical low, if not a tropical cyclone at this point. You might have been able to notice the wind observations that have been overlaid, albeit winds not as strong as what they were this morning, but Centre Island still 45 kilometres an hour from the south. Uh, that's stronger than what the wind forecast would have suggested. It's also stronger than what would have been suggested if this was a tropical low with peak wind speeds of around 50 or 55 kilometres an hour. I reckon this might be very close to getting gale force winds. It just won't be close to getting uh, the gale force organisation rule where you see gales in at least three quarters of the tropical cycle. Cyclones wind field. I don't think the storm's ever going to get that, but it will definitely be attaining tropical cyclone winds tonight and into tomorrow. It is looking pretty decent, that's for sure. Um if we were to flick it over to the infrared satellite imagery and look at all the pretty colors here and have no idea where the borders are around here because that's just what the imagery doesn't allow for. But you can see the blacks and the whites indicate very strong thunderstorm activity and it's quite consistent now around the center of the storm. So for a tropical low, this is doing very, very well right now. And if I was to estimate peak wind speeds around the center on the northern side or on the eastern side of the system, I'd go on as far to say 60 kilometers an hour sustained with peak wind gusts up to 85 or 90. 90 kilometers an hour, which is slightly stronger than what the wind gusts currently suggest. You can see peak wind gusts right now of around 70 to 80 kilometers an hour forecasted in the forecast models. I reckon peak wind gusts might be a little bit stronger than that uh, at this time. And I mean, that's fair enough. The models might be out by a couple of hours. They might be uh, just a little bit wrong in their forecast. And that's to be expected when you've got an intensifying tropical cyclone. But I reckon it is still a little bit stronger than what the forecast initially says. We're not going to waste time with looking at a detailed hour by hour forecast here. That's going to be for tomorrow morning as this system uh, draws closer to landfall. So if you want to see the tomorrow morning update, then please do consider subscribing. But we will, however, take it right to the landfall frame, which I believe will be Friday at around 6 p.m. local time on the top of Centre Island or in specifically the little town of Borulula. That's where we're expecting the landfall to be. Uh, it'll probably be at a cyclone in terms of peak wind speeds, probably not quite a cyclone in terms of August. Organization. So it's probably not going to end up getting a name, but Tropical Low 06U, I want to call it, it might be 07U, is likely to attain tropical cyclone winds, certain tropical cyclone wind gusts, which is reciprocated along all of the major forecast models. The GFS actually calling for quite a strong storm to develop out of this, given how much time it has until landfall. I think the GFS might actually be calling for peak wind gusts of around 70 to 80 kilometers an hour here, which for the GFS, generally the underestimator of all the forecast models, you can extrapolate that and say peak wind gusts between 90 and 110 kilometers an hour are possible. And that is certainly the scenario that we're looking at. And the Access G3 model, also a very similar picture here in terms of peak wind speeds as per the GFS forecast. But in terms of track forecast, it's a little bit different. Still possible, the scope of landfall lies between Centre Island and the Queensland Northern Territory border. But I reckon the Access G3 model might just be a little bit too whack to use at this time. The Archon model as well, another good forecast model to look at, very much in line 
of the Eastern Rivier forecast. In fact, they're almost identical in terms of wind speeds and also location. So I've got a very good idea on when this system is going to be making landfall, which I would call between 3 and 6 p.m. local time tomorrow. And we've also got a very good idea in terms of peak wind gusts, which would be between 80 and 100 kilometers an hour, anywhere towards the east of the center of the storm, which would include locations between Borulula over to Mornington Island, including Mornington Island, which can be expecting wind gusts up to 100 kilometers an hour as well. Now let's take a look at rainfall because rainfall is also a very significant threat from this system. Over the next 24 hours, coastal regions between Centre Island and across to Mornington Island and Burketown can be expecting accumulations up to 150 millimetres. This isn't too much of a concern considering most of this is just mangrove swamp um, and it's all very, very low lying right onto the coastline and 100 millimetres of rain is not going to be catastrophic or world ending over here and it actually looks like the majority of the rainfall stays offshore. But over the next two to three days, you're looking at rainfall accumulations approaching three to 500 millimetres for some locations, especially outside of what looks to be Burketown. That could be the wettest location that we see from this tropical cyclone, which is reciprocated. And I switch back to the satellite imagery right now. It's reciprocated in these, what we call inflow bands here. These are strong thunderstorms streaming into the center of the system. We've also got this very thick cloud happening down here, which if we take a look at radar imagery, you can see that's pretty rain filled at this time. So uh, this is where we're looking out for the bulk of the rainfall between the Queensland Northern Territory border up to around Kurumba and inland to communities such as Gregory, maybe even Mount Isa as well. They might pick up to about 100 millimetres from this system. But certainly around the landfall site will be a little bit dry and rainfall will be a little bit more unpredictable. Anyway, taking a quick look at accumulations, uh, again, you can see three to 500 millimetres, the main story in terms of the wettest, and then maybe about 100 to 300 millimetres around the landfall site. And then it's going to be the inland communities that get very wet from this system. You can see Corella Creek up to 150 millimetres in an area that might only receive 300 millimetres in a calendar year. I know it's a significant amount of rainfall and I know it is the Australian wet season and this happens every single year, but still 150 millimetres in what could be a 24 hour period, it will likely cause some degree of flooding. So if you live around Elliot or Corella Creek, it's advised that you stay on top of a radar and will probably also have livestock and uh, machinery and property moved into sheds that are on higher ground. Um, I read a comment about uh, not leaving the chicken coop outside or something like that and moving the chickens into an interior room of your house. Um, that's probably a bit of an extreme measure for a situation like this. I think this is going to be on the weaker end of a tropical low as it moves through the Northern Territory and also around the landfall site. But once again, it's best to be safe than sorry. And if you can move animals inside uh, into a well-built house or into a well-constructed shed, then that's a very, very good idea indeed. Just take all necessary precautions to, as I've said time and time again, just avoid contact with the insurance company. Companies because that is more of a headache than losing a couple of heads of livestock <laughs> trying to claim anything on, um, with insurance, that's for sure. Anyway, taking a look at 10-day accumulations, it's going to be West Australia's turn to really pick up quite a drenching from the remnants of this tropical cyclone. I've said it before and we'll go into further details in future updates, but you can see it looks like we're going to see the remnants of this tropical low uh, turn into a tropical cyclone over Western Australia and then move into the West Australian coastline between Exmouth and Caratha as a relatively powerful system as well but it could certainly be drenching the western extremities of the Northern Territory around Twin Hills and Wave Hill and uh, maybe down towards Docker River as well and then inland communities such as Balgo, Hills Creek and Fitzroy Crossing in uh, Western Australia could also pick up a very significant amount of rainfall. You're talking up to 400 millimetres for some locations. So that's certainly a forecast that we'll also have to be keeping an eye on but right now it's still all eyes on Queensland. I repeat, a cyclone warning in place between Port Roper and Burketown. If you live between Port Roper and Burketown, especially in coastal areas between Centre Island and Mornington Island inclusive. It is very a very good idea right now to hunker down from this system. Make sure you've got plenty of beer to get you through the next couple of days. It's going to be more of an annoying weather system than it is dangerous. It's going to bring a lot of rainfall and it's really just going to prevent work or movement up in this part of Australia for the next 24 to 36 hours. So a, a bit of a nuisance system, but they do come around and they also can cause some very significant rainfall and it is advised that everyone's stay as safe as possible in a situation like this, but definitely some well-needed rainfall for this part of Queensland, and it looks like it's going to come in the form of this tropical low. But anyways, that is all for me. Stay up to the Bureau of Meteorology on their flood warnings pages and also cyclone warnings pages, and stay up to date with this channel. There's no better way to do that than by subscribing, and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. Your support recently has been greatly appreciated, everyone. Closing in on 11,500 subscribers, so again, thank you so much for the recent support. Leave me some feedback in the comment section down below, or a weather report 
support for your location. I've actually cited a couple of commenters from up in the far northern Queensland and also around the Northern Territory as well. So greetings to all uh, of the viewers watching because of this system. It's great to have your company indeed and keep me posted in the comments on what this system is going to be like. I'm very interested to read all of them. Uh, but yeah, anyways, that is all for me. Quick update tonight and I'll be back at it tomorrow morning with a long form update in the Australian weather and also this system and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.